Um, welcome to the webinar Ecosystem Services of Green Roofs and Possibilities of the Economic Assessment. Uh, we are really glad that so many of you could join us today. I will start shortly presenting uh, myself and my organization. My name is Tatiana Konchenko and I am General Secretary of EFB, the European Federation of Green Roofs and Wall Associations. Our organization was founded in 1897. It's a non-profit organization. It's a, like umbrella federation over national uh, green roof and wall associations. And currently, we have 17 members uh, representing 19 countries, and we have extended networks and cooperations with large uh, green networks of Europe. Um, today, uh, the plan is to have a sh short introduction, uh, then presentation of Anna Mosquita and Marek Hakrole, and Q&A session in the end. Our webinar is supported by uh, four companies, uh, thanks to them, it's free of charge. It's Leka, Sweden, Vegetech, Ecostratus, and Zexfus Grun GmbH. Uh, and um, yeah, I will start presenting uh, the speakers. Uh, one of them you can see hopefully now, it's Anna Mosquita from Portugal. She is Operation Director at Landlab and board member of ANC. Um, Portuguese National Green Roof and Wall Association. And second speaker is Marek Hakrole from Czech Republic. He is a PhD researcher at uh, Burkini University and I Reyes. Um, uh, they introduce them, uh, themselves better during the presentation. And um, yeah, uh, maybe we will start with this first presentation, please, Anna. I will kindly ask you to start presentation. And meanwhile, we will try to fix the technical issues uh, with connecting. Thank you very much, Anna. Can you please unmute yourself? Yes, thank you, thank Tatiana. You. Thank you. Can I share my screen now? <coughs> yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Perfect. So, please tell me if it's all okay. Uh, yes, we see you. Uh, thank you. And presentation. And you see the presentation, right? Yes, yes. Right. Perfect. So. Um, thank you very much for for introducing me, Tatiana, and thank you as well the the AFB for the invitation to be to be here. It's always good to talk about um, green roofs. Uh, I've been working with green roofs since over a decade. It it, it passed really really fast, and I feel like. Um, it's not only a job, but it's it's good to have a job that's also a sense of mission. I have like a sense of mission working with uh, with the green roofs to make. <coughs> sorry, I'm a little, a little bit uh, under the weather uh, to make uh, cities uh, healthier and people living in cities uh, happier as well. So I'm a, I'm a landscape architect actually. And I'm currently uh, doing a master in uh, environment uh, economics, and uh, I work with Landlove over the past decade in in Portugal, and I'm also a board of of uh, member of the board of the ANCV, so the Associação Nacional de Coberturas Verdes, National Association uh, of of Portugal. So I will talk to you about the green roofs uh, uh, ecosystem services. But first, I would like to invite you, all of you, to come to Porto, to come to Portugal next May. We will have the first NBS Summit Urban Edition because we will talk more about the urban NBS. It will be in on the 23 and 24 of May um, this year in, here in Porto. And we are organizing here, uh, we, ANCV, are organizing it with Porto Municipality. Uh, you can have all the information in our website, nbs uh, slash um, summit.com. And we currently have a uh, call for papers open as well. So if you want to share all your uh, recent ideas about green roofs and urban N NBS, we'd like to really to, to have you here in Porto in May. So that said, I want to talk to you about, uh, before I go into the benefits, I want to talk briefly about the problematics and why 
are we uh, facing, what are we facing and what we will be facing the next decade and why the urge for green roofs and NBS. So, uh, today 55% uh, 50, of the world population live in urban areas and we expect to, to for this number to increase until the 70% 70, uh, 70 really, really uh, near in 2050, it's almost tomorrow. And the cities uh, are getting bigger and bigger with uh, more and more uh, people, and they required already two thirds of all the energy produced in the world. They generate 50% of all the global waste, and they're responsible for 60 to 80% of all greenhouse emissions and a lot of uh, natural resource consumptions. So cities, they transform, they are very complex systems and they transform uh, natural landscapes into early uh, engineered artificial ones uh, for, so to, to ensure all of our human activities. As you can see here, um, what was um, Manhattan uh, back in the, in the 17th century and what is now. So this is really a, a, a transformation to from a natural landscape to to an artificial one, and this this change produced really negative impacts on the environment and in people. Uh, we can see all the problematics with increase of imperial surfaces uh, and this crazy urban uh, sprawl. Uh, as you can see in the picture, this is LA, and with that, with that gigantic urban sprawl comes a lot of, of problems with the heat island, with uh, the, the, the stormwater management, and we have as well air and water pollution. So environmental problems come uh, with this transformation from natural landscapes into uh, artificial and complex uh, engineered landscapes. And our life in cities, the 70, soon to be 70% of all the people in the world have uh, problems with their quality of life, high levels of stress, heat waves, um, poorly uh, air quality, smog days, floods, and uh, noise, uh, a lot of noise that we are uh, subject on our daily basis. And then, and that doesn't make us healthier or happier. So we need to change the way we look into cities and we, we need to change the way we project and build buildings. So what is the solution? It's not like a silver bullet, but it's it's part of the solution it, and, and it, we should introduce the nature-based solutions. And to achieve uh, urban sustainability, sustainability, cities must be placed in the front of the environmental protection and climate change initiative. So we should introduce nature-based solutions to the cities. Uh, nature-based solutions have a, a, a wide range of solutions, but here we are. I'm speaking especially to to urban uh, NBS nature-based solutions and. Nature-based solutions give us ecosystem services. What is ecosystem services? It's benefits that nature provides us humans, and they are different kinds of, um, of benefits, supporting, provisioning, culture regulating. All of that are uh, ecosystem services, service that nature give us and for free. And uh, these ecosystem services the, the green roofs as part, they are one kind of the nature-based solutions. There are a lot of nature-based solutions. Green roofs are only one part of the solution. Have really uh, well-documented benefits uh, and, and ecosystem services. Let me just go back and tell you one thing that NBS, uh, like I said, it's not a silver bullet. We need NBS are an alternative to uh, engineer static solutions and nature-based solution and engineer solutions should work together. They are not should we should not forget the engineering solutions. We we have to work together nature-based solutions and engineer solutions. So to talk about green roofs, one of the nature-based solutions, 
Um, they have already, as I, as I told you, documented and well documented uh, benefits. You can find a lot of literature uh, about it. And they have uh, private uh, benefits and uh, public benefits. Private benefits, the ones that you feel in your building for the private owner, and publics, the one that you feel that in, in society in general. Um, one part, one way of studies and talking about uh, the ecosystem service of, of green roofs is putting into boxes. Uh, boxes always help us understanding. And one of the boxes that we could put the, the ecosystem services in is in, in the type. If it is a social benefit, an economic benefit, or an environment benefit. As you can see in this in this image, the lines are not right in stone, and sometimes they cross each, each other, and the social benefit is also an economic benefit, or an environment benefit is also uh, a social one, and they all come together. And, and it's normal for a, a, a benefit for the environment will also be a benefit for, for, for economical reasons. So this is um, to, to talk about uh, uh, the benefits. I will use this this way of, of arrange it, social, environment and economic. And I will start with the economic ones and the increased life for the waterproofing, reducing the maintenance costs, the, the cost of replacing the, the, the waterproofing. I don't know if you saw this movie already. It's Weekend at Bernie's. It's an old movie from the 80s and it's in New York City. And the, these two main characters that you see they are in, in New York and it's very warm and they want to go to the beach and, and they can't go. So they try to 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 build the this uh, this this little pool and some sunbeds in the rooftop the, from the building uh, where where they work. And they and it's really, really warm in, in there in the in the in the, the rooftop and they are burning the feet while they're walking through through the membrane and everything starts to melt. The membrane starts to melt and everything uh, it, they understand. And there's a, a quote from the, the pink shirt guy that said, oh, I'm so miserable. And, and he is so miserable because it's not a nice place to be. It's very warm. It's the 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 most warm place to be in the building. It's it's in the, on the rooftop. So the green roof uh, uh, can, in fact, protect the membrane, protect the membrane from several damages, from mechanical damages, the first, for solar radiation. OK, this solar radiation and it, the UV action will also damage the waterproofing. And especially the green roof will buffer the extreme temperatures during the day and during the night. So the brain brain, it's not always constructing and expanding because with the time, during the time, there will be some differences in, in, in temperature. So the, the membrane will expand and contract and expand and contract. And it would lead to leakage over, over the years and the need to replace the waterproofing. So. A well designed, a well installed, and a well maintained green roof should be um, should extend the life of the membrane for two or three times. Okay, so there's a lot of money that it's not uh, spent on changing the the waterproof membrane. So. Next, the improvement of the electrical performance of uh, solar um, solar panels and PV panels. So when we think uh, in abstract about green roofs or uh, solar or PV panels, we think, OK, they are competitors because, in fact, they are used in the same space, but they can work together with improvements for uh, the electrical performance. So. The, the green roof will reduce the temperature around the, um, the panels and will produce in the panels will produce more electricity when compared to a conventional uh, roof with, with gravel or the bitumen alone. So studies uh, told us that we can produce 6% more electricity or that uh, we can with a Gazania green roof um, increase the power 
output in 1 to 1.29% or with the sedum carpet 3.33%. So that's an economical uh, benefit for, for the green roof. Um, another problematic that we have been facing, and it's been worse from the, the last year, the, the last years, and with with the energy security, uh, it's it's about energy savings and and, and energy efficiency, and um, we can see that 75% of the all the buildings in the European Union are not efficient from the, the energetic point of view. And 40% of all the final energy used in the European Uni Union is used in buildings. So we need to change uh, the way we think about buildings. The buildings are already there, so we cannot just demolish every building and build a new one. It's a different one. It's not possible, but we can do some changes in the in the building, the, the buildings that already exist. And one of the changes that we can do is the installation of, of a green roof. In in this picture, there's a green roof in, in Maya, there's a city in the surroundings of Porto, and this is a warehouse for um, supermarket chain, a Portuguese supermarket chain. So this kind of industrial um, buildings are very difficult to, 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 to warm and to cool, and that's why there are more and more uh, green roofs on, on, on them. So, in Mediterranean climates, a green roof could mean the savings of 54% uh, in the cooling season and 48% in the ET season. We are talking about uh, a, an extensive green roof with a non-insulated uh, um, roof, okay? So, an extensive green roof with a depth of substrate around 10-15 centimeters we are talking during the winter season and um, summer season around 50% in savings. If we change for an intensive green roof with a higher depth of substrate, we can reach 84, 84% in savings. And, and if we talk about the, um, the, 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 the cost, the energy, uh, the, the, the energy bill, we will say that Energy can say energy saving in a green roof could be around 10, uh, 12 kilowatts per, per hour in each one of the cubic uh, square uh, square meter, sorry, of a green roof. Another economic benefit, it's about green jobs with all this European uh, climate pact and all the change that we need to do in in buildings and in the way in our way of life in order to adapt to the, the, the climate change, we will need different jobs. One something that is called green jobs, and we will need to do some reskilling and upskilling from to to to, to the to these kind of jobs because. Um, New, sk new skills will be needed and new jobs will be created. And uh, for Toronto, this was a, a simulation carried out in Toronto that says that uh, more than 1,000 jobs will be created every year if uh, only 6% of the total, the total area of to Toronto will be would be occupied with the green roof. So it is uh, an important market. It will be an important demand also for um, new jobs and new skills in, in the future. And um, for the last economical uh, aspect and benefit, I, I bring the extractical improvement and the increase on paper and property value. So the promoters are starting to understand their uh, the increase in property value with a green roof and what can it what uh, it can, a green roof could do for their business and i think marek will will talk about certainly but this is one of the most key factors for the um, the cost benefit analysis of of a green roof and i will bring you a study case uh, here in porto this is the emporium building um it's located really in the city center, in the, in the heart of Porto. And this uh, building, it's from the, the 40s, and it was the initial state, okay? This is what you what you saw for um, 70 years, okay? So this building was um, 
use it primarily to services some some offices and then we have these warehouses that you can see in the picture and then we have two two levels of the um, underground uh, garage uh, a public one okay open to, to the public so the promoter said i want to, i will transform this building into to housing and i want it for the for for people to have a garden to bring back nature into this inner block and uh, but I, I don't want a simple a simple garden i want a garden with big trees a garden where people can 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 stay uh, so he the only way to do this it was to 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 build a uh, intensive green roof on this on this place so this is uh, the view from the inside the building before the construction okay so this is the building that was uh, rehabilitated and all of this area was the area that was converted to a green roof it's around uh, 1000 square meters of an intensive green roof so this is this are the simulation used to um, sell the apartments. OK, as you can see, they are very good ones. They have a lot of uh, plants and big trees. They are very, very beautiful. Um, and the big trees continue. Uh, they were really used in, in the in, in the construction phase. There was no uh savings on the size of the trees or the amount of plants the owner or the promoter said i don't want to defeat any expectation from the people who bought the, the apartments so big trees we have um sometimes one tree per truck because big big trees were installed in this in this uh, green roof uh here i can see the i can show you the tree anchorage okay and you can all already see the substract and some irrigation of, of the substract during the tree plantations. And here you can see more, more plants coming and the installation of, of, of the trees. And this is the final result. We have several layers of green roof with big trees. And the, the, the promoter and the new owners got really, really hell, uh, happy with the final result. And um, there was no any study uh, held here to compare the, the price for the um, for the, the apartments, comparing with another apartments similar in area to the to this one. Um, but the owner said, uh, "I sold very very easily all the apartments. It was." Uh, a point of differentiation from the all the other uh, projects in the surroundings. I sold it very easy. I sold it with this simulations. OK, and uh, about the costs. Um, the cost for the green roof and the, uh, you can see we use big trees. The cost for the green roof, the, the green roof represented only one percent of the total cost of the project. And uh, I can see uh, uh, someone is asking, and yes, there's another almost 1% extra that was uh, spent on the reinforcement of this building because yeah, the building was from the 50s, was not uh, planned to have this uh, weight on it. We, we are talking about big trees, big subset that's so it needed to be reinforced. We have, 1% for the installation for the construction of the green roof and 1% for the it's it was not 1% it was almost 1% uh, for the reinforcement so in total we are talking about 2% extra in the construction and um, but it was not um, directly transferred to the people buying the flats um because the owner probably he didn't know how to how to evaluate but the thing he says is i sold everything with the simulations and i sold very easily a very um, very fast okay and but i have no doubt that if the new owners wanted now or in some years to sell these apartments it will be uh increase in value for having the the green roof and in fact I think that the, the 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 in the surroundings, as you can see here, the views 
change it completely for the surrounding buildings. So the there wasn't as an increase in the property value even from the buildings in the surroundings, not only for the building with the green roof itself. Okay, it was this this green roof was uh, constructed during the first lockdown, and uh, the people the, the people's reaction was very. Uh, interesting to see and very funny to see people from the other buildings coming to the windows and uh, making videos and posting on social media and because of the crane went the truck it, it was it stayed on the on the on the street and the crane went over the building to pick up the trees and the trees kind of flying um over the building what what happened the people started to making applauses at the windows uh, for for the trees, it was it was um, really nice to see that reaction for the people seeing the the nature going back to this uh, inner block. So going for the environmental um, benefits and one related directly with a with a green roof and an increase of, of uh, green area and habitats it's the increase in biodiversity and um i i bring you the the green roof uh, the first green roof designated as a natural preserve and this is a school in the uk and in 2010 the amount of biodiversity found in this in this uh project was so high that declared uh, nature uh, reserve and uh, it's it's funny to see today i had today in the morning i had a um, a meeting with a with a client that proposed uh, a green roof uh, to to a public uh, institution here in portugal and then he called me the architect called me and he said oh the the authorization uh, or the institution and they are saying maybe we should not have the green roof because it increases biodiversity uh, and they, they are seeing it as a bad thing. We are talking about a big institution here in Porto that says gave it a, a bad uh, decision. So we need to improve, really improve the the knowledge about biodiversity in, in green roofs um, here, here in Porto and in other, in, in other countries. So back to this first nature preserved uh, green roof in the UK. I will also show you some pictures. When we th when we uh, talk about biodiversity in green roofs, of course we tend to think about plants, but they are not the only biodiversity that can be found in 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 green roofs. Obviously, plants, yes, for sure. But we have birds, we have pollinators. We have insects, we have microbiology in the substrate, so it's a wide range of fauna and flora to be found and to have a new uh, habitat in, in green roofs. Another uh, benefit, environment and a benefit, but also an economical benefit, is the, the water management. Uh, this picture is, in, is it's from, from Lisbon in 2002. Here in Portugal, we have been facing problems with several droughts in, in winter and in, in spring. And then uh, we have problems with floods in our main cities in Porto, Lisbon, Coimbra, um, during the, the, the autumn, because we have been facing, and it's part of the climate change, really uh, heavy fall events. So extent green roofs can and will um, uh, redux or re reduce uh, the storm water runoff. Part of the, um, the the water will stay in the green roof. And uh, as you can see in the literature, you can see a lot of different studies, and it depends uh, on what kind of green roof do we have, the the, the substrate that that we have. But in general, we can say that green roofs could re decrease the storm water runoff in fifty. 7%, okay? We are talking about extensive uh, green roof. If we go into an intensive green roof, the runoff could be um, uh, bigger. Uh, there's a study uh, for hydrological performance of the green roofs in Lisbon that um, made uh, an academic exercise. It's not possible to, to do things like that, but it's, uh, it, they just think, what if 
all the flats roofs uh, in Lisbon would have a green roof, an extensive green roof. How how many water could could we uh, retain in in the system? So, if all the flat roofs in Lisbon were uh, greened, we could have over two um, two hundred uh, thousand uh, cubic meters of water retained in the system and relieving all the urban drainage systems and of course preventing uh, events like you see in, in the picture. Um, the same study says that we can so uh, have a, a retention of 71%, a flow delay in two hours, a peak attenuation of 90% and a peak delay in one hour and a half. Just to show you how it works, so a, a big part of the all the, the rainwater will stay in the system, in the substrate, in the drainage layers, in the protection mats, and will not go to the urban drainage system. And the the water will be utilized by the plants and going back to the atmosphere and make it raining, make it clouds, and make it rain in somewhere um, somewhere else. So. Um, a green roof, it's not a, perme a permeable surface. It's, uh, it's, it's not, but can help us to, to manage water in, in the cities and to deal with that extremely, extreme rain rainfall events that uh, are uh, coming more often. Air quality improvement, it's also a benefit from the green roof. This is a really a smog day that the, we need screens to show us how the, the sky used to be uh, blue. And a uh, green roof could remove uh, the particles, pollutant particles of, of the air, like the PM10, like uh, sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide. And it can really improve our um, air quality in the cities and also can makes carbon sequestration and capture uh, uh, up to seven kilos uh, of carbon per square meter each year. Of course, this um, this is this amounts of carbon or pollutants. It depends a lot of the kind of green roof, of the type of green roof that we have and the kind of plants that we have. I think this picture speaks really for, for itself. Here we can see some thermal image, thermal image from the Chicago City Hall, and you can see the green roof measures uh, almost 40 degrees less than the conventional green roof beside it, okay? So this um, heat island effect reduction is very important for uh, the extreme uh, events, uh, climate events that we are facing. It's very important to prevent it, uh, it, it waves and it, that very, they are very, very damaged to our health, but also to prevent extreme um, storms like the Rina storms or other, other events. Uh, passing to the social benefits. Uh, another aesthetical uh, improvement and in, an increase in the quality of life, bringing new spaces, new places for for plants, for nature, and for people to to use. This is also a case study in 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 Oporto, in Portugal. This is um, Praça de Lisboa. It's really near the other uh, project, the green roof that I show you, really in the city center, where everyone will say there's no space for gardens, there's no space for parks, um, we don't have space for trees at all, but it, it, it is possible to have uh, green spaces in consolidated areas, urban areas, using the green roof. So this picture is from Clarigos Tower, it's one of the biggest uh, towers and monuments here in, 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 in Oporto, and it was the view. So this this place this was abandoned for um, a few years. It was like like this. Underneath, there's a uh, three layer, three levels of uh, uh, car um, under underground uh, car, a public one, 
and with the green roof it was possible to transform this uh, image in this image. Uh, this is the actual uh, state now of the of this square. Um, it maintained the, the underground car park with uh, uh, levels of rule of uh, stores and restaurants and some cafes here and then we have a green roof and it's now it's one of the most Instagrammable uh, parts of the city, always full of people during the day, during the night, tourists, people from Porto. We have a small cafe here as well. So it's it transformed this, this square completely. Another social benefit is night reduction. Uh, you, you, you can imagine that people uh, working eight hours in buildings like airports have uh, are, are under um, levels, high levels of noise, and it's not easy to be there eight, nine hours a day. So that's why uh, several airports already have green roofs. Um, with 10 centimeters, the, the, green, the, the reduction of noise will be five decibel, it's minimum, but with 10 uh, centimeters of substrate, we have a really... <coughs> a big reduction up to 50 decibel. Another thing that uh, green roofs can do is food, food production, okay? And we can um, produce uh, vegetables on the roof, uh, local uh, vegetables, and decrease uh, as well the footprints, the footprint of, of, the, the, of our food. Um, so we can have fresh uh, local vegetables, improving as well the security food in the cities and decreasing the, the, the footprint for food and connect urban consumers with their food. There's a, a study that said that in the city of Bologna in Italy, rooftop vegetable gardens could uh, supply uh, uh, about 77% of all the inhabitants' uh, requirements for uh, fresh uh, products. And our um, last uh, social benefit is the carbon sequestration and buildings environmental responsibility. Uh, we spend our time in, um, in buildings and 50% of the final energy used in the European Union is used in buildings and they are responsible for 30 cents. 36% uh, of the energy related emissions. So we need to address some responsibility for the, the buildings and for the construction industry. The construction industry has uh, one of the most uh, biggest footprints and we should have take, uh, take um, the responsibility also in the buildings. We are talking about enterprises environmental and social uh, responsibility. And we should think also about bu buildings, environmental um, responsibilities. So I think I uh, already uh, take a lot of, of time, but I would like to, to give you some conclusions. Um, as you can see, green roofs could help us uh, to adapt to the, the climate change and increase our climate uh, resilience, um, especially in cities. They could improve our quality of life and our health and uh, make us living a happier uh, life. And they, are, they have benefits. They have benefits that make them economically viable. Benefits public and, and private ones. But uh, of course, the private ones are more direct, but the public ones, could be internalized into the owners by some uh, subsidies. So the green roofs um, need to be more and more uh, on the on the on the order of the day. And webinars like this are important. And uh, national uh, training for uh, architects and for installers are, re are really important. And as well. The, the authorities, the local authorities, they still have a lack of information 
about all of these benefits that I told you, and it's important to address them, that all, all of that uh, knowledge. So thank you very much, and I uh, wait for all your questions at the end. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you for your presentation, for your very comprehensive presentation and all your knowledge. Um, Anna will stay with us uh, till the end of the webinar, and in the end we will have a Q&A session. So uh, if you have some questions additional to that you sent us in registration forms, please write them to the chat. We will collect them and I will try to answer most of them. Thank you very much. And now uh, I will present our second speaker, Marek Heckerle from Czech Republic, the PhD researcher at the Brookings University and the IRS, an expert in monetary evaluation of ecosystem services. Welcome, Marek. Uh, hi, <laughs> can you unmute yourself? Great. And um, yes, we will start now with the second presentation. And after this, we will have a Q&A session. And please stay tuned. We'll, I will also inform you about future events, which also might be interesting for you all. And now, Marek, thank you. Stage is yours. Thank you, Anna. Yes. Can you hear me, Tatiana? Yes, we hear That's you well, great. and we see your presentation. That's thank you. great. So let's do it. So uh, hello from me as well. and. Hello to all the participants of this webinar. Uh, I am Marek Ekerle and I'm really uh, excited to share with you some of my experience uh, on ecosystem services of Green Roofs and uh, talk a little bit about possibilities for their economic assessment. So it's an exciting topic, so let's, uh, let's talk about it. Uh, so let, let me start with a brief introduction of, of, of our team. And I'm part of the team that, that is uh, uh, from Jan Evangelista Purkini University in Justin Alabem in, in Czech Republic. And um, uh, most of us are environmental economists. So uh, we focus on application of economic methods, uh, mostly for the, for the expression of cost and benefits of, of all nature-based solutions including, of course, green rules. And um, we, are, uh, we are not technicians in implementations of, of green roof. roof. I, have, uh, I have to say that, but I think we, we do quite a lot of, of um, things to promote uh, green roofs implementation. Uh, we do many uh, research projects. We do um, uh, quite a lot of surveys experiments, lectures and, and excursions. And we, uh, most importantly for, um, for today, we do economic assessments. And um, uh, our aim is to provide a uh, socioeconomic perspective on uh, implementation of, of green roofs and nature-based solutions in general. And we try to, uh, to, to provide some, some arguments to be communicated uh, with the uh, with, uh, with, uh, different stakeholders. And uh, what we already know from our surveys is that we all, we all want to live uh, near, the, near the greenery. We all want to, to, to live uh, in the streets where uh, the greenery is present and uh, uh, on the roof, uh, in the streets. Um, and from from, uh, from the economic point of view, it's uh, important to say that uh, we are uh, also uh, willing to pay higher prices for for these places with, with more greenery. And and there is no no coincidence that the, the most priced uh, properties are uh, are usually just next to the urban park uh, or in the streets where the the greenery is is present uh, and uh, we, uh, we we in our team we uh, are aware how important is communication uh, with, with the public and with the different stakeholders so we do we do lectures you can see uh, uh, on the left picture that um, uh, this this is picture from the uh, from public walk from one of the Czech city where we we do a walk uh, through the city, through the uh, different solutions that, that were implemented uh, to help the city manage the rainwater, 
you can see the, 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 the people that are standing in one of the solutions. This is a, a, a flower bed uh, or the, uh, uh, that helps the, the rainwater to retain uh, in the place uh, that is just next to the road. And on the right side, there's, there is an excursion from one of the uh, one of the semi-intensive green roof that is lo located just uh, in the center of, of Prague. And you can see 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 the same, same this picture. And you can imagine having having what a benefit it is to 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 have a lunch in, and then you have a, your lunch break here uh, with such a view. And from the economic uh, point again, the owner of the building is aware of this benefit and offers the the the, the space on the roof for rent to tenants. So uh, this is it. And this is uh, this is uh, another green roof. Uh, I think one of the most famous and well-known uh, green roof from from Czech Republic. This is a green roof um, from Prague, and this green uh, green roof was uh, installed as a wetland green roof. And um, uh, all the wastewater from the household is uh, uh, cleaned a little bit and then pumped to the to the roof, where it's slowly filtrated. Uh, through the through the roots of the plants, and then pumped back to the reserve, water reservoirs and used as a grey water uh, uh, for flushing the toilets and for uh, for irrigation of the garden. And uh, I uh, I mentioned that we do experiments uh, on the pictures. You can you can see the green roof, the extensive one that was installed. Uh, on one of the buildings uh, of our faculty at the university. Uh, and uh, this green roof was installed as a part of the reconstruction of, of the roof. And we somehow uh, some, somehow uh, 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 someone uh, managed to, to uh, and convince the authorities from our university to, to, to implement the green roof as a part of the reconstruction. And what is uh, quite interesting, in, in my opinion, is that um, we have a surface temperature sensors. Uh, and thanks to the sensors, we know what's the difference in the temperature uh, on the green roof and on the conventional roof that is ma made uh, from, from the PVC uh, is insulation. Uh, and uh, during the, the hottest day in the summer, the difference could be uh, about uh, 40 degrees Celsius when you compare the temperature on the green roof and the temperature uh, and the temperature that is on the roof that is just just next to the green roof and uh, that is without greenery. So that's what we call air, natural and air conditioning, right? And uh, here we are. We also do do the economic assessment, and uh, the reason is that uh, that the reason is not that we as economists want to, to have everything in, in, uh, in enough. But then we perceive that there is a, a, a quite a demand for 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 economic assessment and and for quantification of cost and benefit. Uh, of, of, of green roofs, uh, because um, among the common barriers, there are still 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 concerns about the, 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 the cost and feasibility of green roofs, and there is still still a lack of information about the benefits. Uh, all that is visible are usually the, the costs, right? We all know that. And, and there is also a lack of arguments when you want to, to convince the potential investor uh, to, to implement green roofs or to add some greenery to, to, to a projects. So that's why we do economic assessment. And by having said that, uh, the, uh, we, we think that the economic assessment can uh, be a supportive tool and, uh, the, and to provide arguments of economic nature to inform the policy making, uh, to negotiate with business, to communicate with public. 
and um, the, the, as a basis for economic assessment, we 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 we, uh, we we use the economic services concept and and we categor categorize uh, the the benefits of green roofs as ecosystem services and we can consider these ecosystem services um, as a, as a, as a benefits that that nature may provide for for humans and um, as a benefits that contribute to 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 human uh, well-being as 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 Anna uh was talking about uh, in previous presentations and i think we we are all uh, uh, we all agree that if you think about your personal quality of life and well-being it will be different than uh, you will be uh, you will be uh, surrounded by the places like this uh, in comparison to to place the same type of places that can uh, look like this and uh, uh, speaking about ecosystem services of, of green roofs, there are not just uh, two or three of them, there are many of them. And, uh, and I was talking about uh, all of them, uh, and uh, you can see uh, uh, them on this figure. Uh, it's increased property value, it's energy saving. Uh, cooling and heating and growing right but as uh, some recreational of these social interactions and so on and uh, so the, uh, uh, and now I just would like to you know go through through many of the ecosystem services and and uh, I'm going to 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 present to you how they can be monetized how you can uh, value you some of them in monetary terms and and just to describe you the logic that is behind the monetization of them sorry so if and i want to talk about what data is needed and so on so if we start with the rainwater runoff management that is one of the commonly mentioned mentioned benefit associated with green roofs um, this benefit can be can be monetized uh, using the studies about rainwater retention capacities. Uh, there is a number of studies that that describe uh, describe uh, this uh, this retention capacity of different green roofs under different climate, and and we also usually have uh, that data from from the hydrometeorological station about the precipitation during the year. And uh, we can calculate this benefit using the market prices for wastewater treatment, because uh, we know if uh, the rainwater is part of the if part of the water is uh, retained uh, on the, uh, it means that uh, not not uh, not that much water uh, goes into the sewer, right? So uh, we can use the market price uh, prices for wastewater treatment and you know, monetize this benefit uh, as a cost savings in wastewater treatment. So, so it's simple, simple logic that can, you know, guide us through the monetization of this benefit. And there is also another important benefit that is provided by greeners, and that is energy savings on heating or cooling. And there are, again, a number of studies that, uh, you know, measure uh, the insulation capacity of, of of different green roofs. Uh, usually we get uh, this number in kilowatt hours per square meter of the roof. And, uh, and there, there is commonly available and free available data about market prices of heating and, and, and cooling. And uh, simply by multiplying these data about uh, insulation and, and the price, we can get a benefit in terms of lower heating or cooling bill. And there is uh, another benefit of green roofs that is interior noise reduction. And uh, again, there are a number of, of studies about the positive effect of green roofs on acoustic, uh, acoustic in a building. Anna, Anna, Anna was mentioned a few of them. And we can use, uh, we can calculate and monetize this benefit using the price for the technical insulation that that can have a similar same or similar effect and, uh, again we can monetize this benefit using uh, uh, the cost uh, savings on 
on alternative noise insulations uh, on on some technical insulation that have a similar effect. Uh, and so increased insulation lifespan is another benefit of green roofs. And we, we know from the studies uh, the, the extension capacity and extension benefit uh, of the green uh, of insulation. And uh, we can again use the, uh, the, the price for the insulation that will be saved because of the uh, green roofs and uh, monetize this benefit as a cost savings on insulation replacement. <clears throat> another benefit uh, and another eco ecosystem services service, service is uh, air quality improvement uh, that is uh, based on pollutant removal capacity of greenery. You can you can get uh, the number from the, from different studies for for your type of green roof and for your uh, for your conditions. Uh, uh, usually uh, in gra grams for square meter, and you can use the, the, the prices of similar measure, for example, technical measure, um, uh, for example, uh, the change of heating supply in a household that can have a similar, similar or the same effect on, on, on uh, pollutant removal from the air, like, uh, like, uh, like the green roof, and you can you can you know um, express and value this benefit as a cost savings on other solution, um, and then you have a carbon sequestration. Uh, uh, we know from the studies that uh, what the absorption capacity of green roofs in relation to 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 CO two is, and we can simply uh, you know. Uh, monetize this uh, benefit using the price of carbon dioxide. And here, here we have uh, aesthetic improvement, and this is a very important benefit from the economic assessment point of view. Uh, and you can calculate and, and monetize this benefit uh, as an aesthetic improvement to the building, and even as an aesthetic improvement to the surrounding building that over, overlook, uh, overlooks the green roof because uh, from uh, from the lit lit literature and from the studies uh, around the world we know that the similar buildings in similar locations are priced uh, differently uh, depending on whether they have a green roof or not and so we can uh, we can take from these studies the property prices and the rent percentage in increase uh, that is uh, usually uh, about uh, about one one three five uh, to to uh, about fifteen percent of the property price, uh, but it depends uh, of course on, on on the on the location and on on you know simply uh, by Google googling what the local market prices for the properties are. And uh, so these are the benefits that we can, we can commonly, commonly uh, you know, uh, assess and monetize in our economic assessment. And we are, we, we, I think we are all aware that part of the benefit is, is the, uh, our private benefits that, that are interesting for the investor to the green roof. And part of the benefits are the social benefits that that goes beyond uh, uh, financial and economic benefits for the investor. So, and another part of the benefits uh, are benefits that are that we we usually uh, cannot you know monetize in, in in a proper way, and that are hard to monetize at least for for our Czech Czech approach. Uh, and these benefits are biodiversity, microclimate regulation, or social interaction that are important benefits of green roofs, but not so easy to, to monetize. And so this was just, just the brief introduction how the, the benefits can be monetized and uh, in a general way. And now I would like to, to show you uh, three case studies and uh, studies uh, where uh, our economic assessment 
uh, was applied and and show you some numbers about the, the economic feasibility of, of green roofs. Uh, using the three case studies, you can see the, the, the three buildings that that has a, has a uh, that have a, have, a, have a extensive green roofs and we apply the Czech cost benefit analysis approach. We try we try to to compare the, the monetized cost and benefit. So the cost benefit analysis we have a certified methodology in Czech Republic, uh, and this uh, this method allows us to compare. Uh, discounted benefits and costs of green roofs in their lifetime, and uh, and you know to discover financial and socio economic feasibility of green roofs. I don't think we have a time to go into uh, into the details, but if you can find the details in, in this publication, or I will uh, I will show you show you another another uh, you know source of information at the end end of my presentation. So, uh, uh, brief introduction to the case studies. As I said, we had, had three green rules where the economic assessment uh, uh, was applied. The first case study is a, is a extensive green rules on, on the public building that was financed by the municipality. This is a picture from after the after implementation. And uh, you can see this is the, the, the initial initial state of the roof with, with the gravel and on the right side you can you can see the the test of waterproofing membrane and uh, what is quite an interesting way how to uh, incorporate the investor into the action is that uh, the city uh, representatives conceived the, the implementation uh, as a team building and um, and and uh, the people from the municipality uh, was part of the installation on the left side the one with the shovel and, and and smiling this is the mayor of the city so it was quite a it was quite a social event to to implement and install the green roof and on the right side you can see just just the the, the beginning of planting the sedum plants and and some grasses uh, the second second case study that we that uh, that we used uh, is a green roof on a residential building that was financed by a private development company, and our third green roof that uh, served as a case study is uh, this extensive green roof uh, that uh, was installed uh, on a single residential house. And it was financed by the private individual, uh, and consists of sedum, mostly con sedum and grass with vegetation. So here are the the monetary uh, assessment results of different ecosystem services that we were able to mo monetize. On the left side, uh, in blue, you can see the monetized benefits. And uh, on the right side, you, you can see the, the level of, of ecosystem services in monetary terms. So in terms of rainwater uh, runoff regulation, we monetize this benefit as an annual benefit uh, that is provided by the green roof. And uh, this benefit uh, ranged from, uh, uh, was around 30 euro cents per square meter of the roof. Energy savings was monetized as an annual benefit uh, ranging from 1.5 to uh, 2.18 euros per square meter every year, depending on, on the roof. Interior noise reduction, that was a one-off benefit that, that is 12, uh, that was the same for, for all the roofs and was calculated um, as a 20 euros per square meter increased insulation uh, uh, lifespan was calculated as a periodic uh, benefit and uh, was 14 euros per square meter of the green roof. And air quality improvement was calculated using the logic that I was uh, show, showing you earlier in the, my presentation and uh, was uh, 
19 cents per square meter of the green roof and CO2 reduction of carbon sequestration also calculated, uh, but was um, quite a marginal. And uh, the most important um, uh, system benefit was the aesthetic improvement, and we were able to, to, to monetize uh, this benefit as a as a uh, increased property value and uh, as an increased rent uh, in the building, depending on the case study and depending on the ownership regime that is under the green roof. So if it was calculated as a one-off benefit, um, you can see that it could be, uh, this benefit could be more than 200 euros per square meter of the roof. And if it was, if it is calculated as an annual um, uh, benefit, uh, as a Green in the building or in the building that overlooked the green roof, that uh, you can have a, a view on the green roof from the from your window. Um, it can range in this case from uh, 50 cents uh, euros per square meter to to 8.32 uh, euros per square meter. I think you will have this this you know uh, slides available after after the webinar so you can you can just just uh, go through through the numbers in more detail and uh, um, to, to be able to compare these benefit these monetized benefits with the cost we also you know include into the assessment the, the cost and we included the, the, the installation and maintenance cost uh, the installation range from 30 to 58 euros per square meter of the green roofs, depending on the case study and the maintenance cost where were considered the annual cost range from, from 40 cents uh, to, to almost one euro uh, per square meter every year. And here we are uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with the results of the whole economic assessment. And you can see the, uh, the cost and, and the, the benefits uh, 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 of the green roofs in 40 years lifespan, lifespan. And if you look at the green numbers, um, they show the difference between the monetized cost and monetized benefits in 40 years of lifespan of the green roofs. We can see that the benefits outweigh, outweigh, the, outweigh the costs in, uh, and by 28 to 166. 60, uh, 62 euros, uh, thousand euros, and and all the assets green roofs are economically viable or feasible from from uh, from socio-economic point of view, and um, and uh, monetized benefits exceeds uh, or monetized benefits are four to six times greater than, than the costs. And uh, so, so uh, if you think about these results, uh, how results can be useful in a practice, how we can use them as, as, as a one, uh, one step that to try to um, promote the green roofs. And, and I think we can, we can uh, go back to the reasons why, why we do economic assessment and we can talk about that these results can be useful when we communicate with the public. For example, when we, prom when we try to promote the benefits using their, their monetary uh, values, uh, and, and when we just want to justify uh, the cost of actions, uh, we can use the, the, the monetized benefits um, because, uh, as I said earlier, uh, the, of many times the costs are only visible uh, economic numbers that are visible when you try to implement green roofs. And we can use uh, the economic assessment uh, when we want to negotiate with the stakeholders. Uh, we can use it to convince developers that the installation of green roofs will have uh, these and these you know, benefits for, for them. And we can uh, uh, use the economic assessment if you want to, to, to have a tool 
how to define policies to support, support measures. And I was talking about the compensation of, of uh, positive externality, so we can uh, use the, the economic assessment to do so. And, uh, and these, these, these high highlights bring us to the very end of my presentation, where I would like to emphasize uh, that the ecosystem services um, uh, provided by Greenus offer us an opportunity to increase our well-being. And uh, from the economic point of view, uh, these ecosystem services typ typically exceed the implementation and maintenance costs many times over the lifetime of the green roofs. And the economic assessment can, can you know, provide us some, uh, some economic you know, uh, arguments to advocate for, for the implementation of, of roofs. So, uh, and, uh, it, it, so it makes sense, at least from the econ socioeconomic point of view, to support green roofs. And, and also the green economic assessment can uh, can uh, give us a strong argument how to communicate uh, these benefits to the public uh, because we all are aware that the communication is the, the, the hardest part sometimes and it's, a, it's a crucial to uh, uh, then we talk about wider application of, of green use. So, uh, here we are. Here, here are just just uh, some uh, additional information uh, and very kind uh, the additional information about economic assessment. We uh, published last year a, a, a paper with uh, with colleagues from Portugal that are very you know, uh, experienced in, in in economic assessment. And so you can find another uh, information about ecosystem services, about the monetarization, and the, about some benefit assumption, assumptions that enter and the cost benefits analysis here, or you can just just uh, look on uh, website of our of, of our company, or just just you know write me on mail. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Marek. Thank you. Uh, thank you a lot. We have many, many questions into the chat. Uh, maybe we can start with Q&A session uh, now, and uh, I will start from those questions which are related to the numbers you showed, Marek. Uh, the question was, uh, does this include the aesthetical uh, valuation, and what was the approximate investment per square meter? Uh, yeah, of course, the aesthetic uh, aesthetic benefit was included in in a case studies that I I was showing you, and uh, I think I, I I show the numbers, and and to be honest, this uh, the aesthetics is the most crucial benefit that influence whether the green roof is economically and financial viable for the investor. So so if uh, so this is something that we need to be uh, be uh, ready to to monetize uh, if you want to do cost benefit analysis. But, uh, you can also that was showing by Anna or or by by me because we know that there are studies that you know uh, analyze the the market of the properties in different different cities and shows that there is a. Uh, uh, there is a relation uh, between the market price and, and, the, and the, the presence of, of the greenery uh, as a part of, of, the, of the building. Thank you. Thank you. And also some technical questions. Maybe Anna can help here. So is either an extensive or intensive green roof uh, better? Are, um, are there any cases where one of others can be used? Uh, they are not better or intensive or extensive. There are options, and sometimes uh, it, it depends. When we think about uh, having um, green roofs to a larger scale, we are mainly talk about the extensive green roof because it costs less. They have 
um, less uh, reduce it uh, installation price and reduce it maintenance and price. OK, and even for buildings, they the, the, the weights are less, so it's easier to install an extensive green roof. OK, if we can, if we have the the, the, the weight if or the, the load, if we have the money, we can make an intensive green roof and, and a green roof that will be used by people. Uh, so there's no uh, one option is better than the other. There are options. There are different kind of um, situations and are used in different kinds of situations. There are benefits that you can feel the most intensive uh, because you can uh, retain more water in an intensive green roof because you have more uh, substrate depth. Uh, the, 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 the botanic used in an intensive green roof are more complex. They have different metabolism, but there's no there's no uh, one option is better than the other. They are different and they cannot be uh, used in the same type of, of buildings. Thank you, thank you. And also a question uh, relating to the water attenuation of extensive green roof. What was the time period uh, that this water saving was recorded? What water saving? I don't know if I understood the question. Um, yeah, I think uh, it's uh, tomorrow. I, I, I think I, I, I get, get a question. Um, it's very important to, to consider the different retention capacity of the green roof during the year, right? Uh, the retention mm -hmm. capacity is different uh, during the summer and different during the uh, winter, at least for our condition in the Czech Republic, where in the winter the, uh, there is a different precipitation and, and the substrate is frozen. So we need to consider this when we calculate these uh, water savings. But I think Anna can com complement me in this way. Yes, yes, yes. During the year, there are different uh, percentage of water retention, of course. Yes, you, you can, uh, uh, a green roof can retain 80% uh, of the, 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 the rain in, in summertime and 70% during the winter time. There are differences between the percentage of water uh, through the winter and, and uh, summertime, yes. Uh, just to compliment you, Anna, uh, from our practice, we we are used to uh, uh, to think about this benefit in terms of uh, 25 or 30 percent of water uh, uh, is retained on on the roof, and I'm speaking about extensive roof. So in in our conditions, we consider there is benefit as of as in terms of 30% of total precipitation, precipitation in a year of is year. retained of the year is retained by the green roof. But it's it, it's for our conditions and it will be different for another one. Yeah, and, and different different from the conditions and different from the type of green roof as well. Yeah, so it was stated that 57% of rain Fall it's, was collected it was by through Greenwood. the year, it's overall through the year. Through the year, yes, so yes. thank you. Uh, coming back to aesthetic benefits, so the question is uh, either the green roof on top of high buildings that nobody can see would have less monetary benefit than green roof that uh, the users of the building can use, right? That's correct. You need to consider the, the, uh, the situation in the decoding assessment and it's uh, it's obvious that if if no one can see the green roof you cannot calculate uh, the benefit from uh, from from you seeing the green roof uh, from your window so yeah so yeah, you need to correct. add green walls <laughs> that <laughs> that's correct yeah. yeah thank you so we have a question also so for a person from Slovakia, Kosice, and they're trying, trying to convince city and regional authorities to implement more green spaces, change moving strategies and improve a very bad air quality. What would be your best tip, for example, to invest in, motivate them to invest in green roofs, how to convince them? And also maybe a related question, do you have an example of business model which can, such suggestions can build upon? So it was a lot of a lot of information. So, uh, so how the, to convince how, how to, to convince authorities? Uh, authorities, yes. 
um, yes, it, it's by sharing all the information and for them to have informed decisions. You know, here I think the, the national associations have a role on, on this change of, um, of, of mentalities to share all the benefits and to share um, exchange knowledge with uh, different cities and that already have uh, policies for, for green roofs and they they have policy for making green roofs mandatory, for example. So sharing the information and exchanging, uh, exchanging information with this the, those kind of authorities, cities uh, like London or Linz or Copenhagen uh, could be could be done. Um, for for uh, learning with them with them uh, with their example, yes, I think yeah, it would be the best tip. And also, uh, where people can access the economic assessments, I think you the links you shared right for those searches, we will also yeah. add them uh, to the materials we will send you after the presentation. Maybe we will move back to the questions which we received in the registration forms. And the first one is um, the basis of both stability and cost is the stability and quality of the substrate. What uh, is the time for using substrate today? But uh, what is the time to replace it? And uh, are there any experiences with the age of substrate? So um, the, the quality of the substrate it's very important. It's a key factor for the success of the, the green roof. The quality, and here I have to recommend the, the, the guides, the technical guides, the FL, or we have here in, in Portuguese um, our technical guide, and they have um, curves for the substrate, and it's very important to uh, invest in a good uh, in a good uh, substrate that would last longer. If um, if the quality of the substrate is good, if it has uh, a good uh, structure with a mineral percentage, it's not expected to be replaced um, quite often of totally replacement. Uh, I think uh, invest in the good substrate that um, goes uh, within all the, the, the guidelines, all the the, um, the granulomatic curves for, for, for the guidelines. And of course, it needs to be proper installation uh, and proper maintenance. Um, maybe we need to add some some more metallic, uh, organic matter, um, and we need to to have a, pr a proper system. Not only the the substrate, all the system need to be a good system. And I think um, that a green a green roof substrate could last ten, um, twelve, uh, twenty years. Sorry, twenty years or, or more if it's a good one, or and and a well maintained substrate, but way more. So there is no um, one one size fits all in in a matter of substrate. You need also to adapt the substrate to 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 the climate and to the plants that were going to be used in the green roof. So I think if we take uh, all of these uh, questions in, in regard of these questions, quality of materials, a good installation with the system. Uh, a good um, maintenance, uh, we don't need to replace uh, the substrate, yeah. but we need to maintain it. That is for sure, we need to maintain it. Thank you. And a question to Marek. Uh, what are the economic benefits after 10 years? 40 is very far. <laughs> yeah, it's very far and uh, um, it's a good question. Thank you for it. Uh, I think I didn't mention that um, and I show you the, the case studies. Uh, the payback period um, uh, was just uh, two years. So after two years, the, the calculated benefits exceed uh, the initial costs that are invested into the into the green roofs. And and I think from at least from my experience, most of the benefits are econ economically viable. Uh, 10 or 15 years if, it's, if we are talking about the extensive ones uh, and and um, this is some uh, very very influenced the paper period is influenced by the type of the green roof and if the green roof uh, uh, is visible from surrounding buildings if um, 
you have access as a tenant, tenant or owner of the building uh, to the green roof and you can use uh, the green roof uh, for your recreation and, and during, during your free time. So, these are economic results. And, uh, um, but back to your questions, after 10 years, uh, you will you usually have some you know good good numbers to show show the uh, municipality representatives or other potential investors, but uh, I, I can't tell you the exact uh, number right now. Thank you. Um... Like our time is over, but maybe if our speakers can stay for a couple more questions, we can continue a bit. Yeah, right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you very not? much. So we will continue answering. Like, what are the benefits for pollinators bees? Oh. Yeah. So be. Yes, uh, green roofs are habitat for for the pollinators, so they have uh, benefits, and then um, there are areas of uh, resources uh, provision for, for the pollinators. So um, they are very happy with green roofs. And uh, we have, um, you know that uh, in a different uh, countries in Europe, they, in some places they have uh, hives in the, in, the, in the green roof. Here in Portugal, it's not allowed by law. Um, we cannot have hives in, in near 100 meters from the, from the the buildings, and but but pollinators in the green roof could be uh, a good match. They they tend to like it because there's a provision for them. Of course, we can increase the um, the the food for 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 pollinators with certain kind of plants, and we can choose certain kind of plants to increase the pollinators yes yeah, thank you and what are green uh, what are green roofs and walls possibilities in northern countries sorry can you repeat it oh, what are the green roofs and walls possibilities in northern countries the possibilities are huge <laughs> i think <laughs> there's a lot of possibilities for for uh, green roofs and green walls in in the northern countries I think northern countries have um, a, a plus um, that here in the Mediterranean it's more difficult to us to have a, a green roof because our rain it's not well distributed throughout the year. In the northern countries we have even even more even rain through the year, so the maintenance will be will be easier for the northern the northern countries than here in the Mediterranean, and um, in other countries, and you need uh, extra heating, a green roof will always have uh, uh, benefits uh, comparing with any other conventional roof. So, so I think there's a lot of possibilities for green roofs and walls uh, in northern, yes. in northern and in southern countries. Huge experience. And for Anna, you mentioned earlier about unwanted in the increases of bi in biodiversity. That is one thing I have heard people don't want to attract more seagulls, for example, because in the cities there are pests. Any thoughts on this kind of problem? Yes, I, 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 uh, I that's this, this authority, this Portuguese authority to us today that say, OK, we don't want a green roof because, well, uh, uh, we read that it decreased biodiversity and, I forgot to mention that, and it retains pollutants. So they don't want the, the green roof on their uh, building. And there is this, the seagulls, it could be a problem. Um, the, the pigeons could also be a problem. Uh, we have a problem with, um, I don't know what to say in English, let me just... And we have a, a really um, big problem with that here in Portugal in with worms. Sorry, I was missing the um, the name. With worms in several uh, green roofs, and there were like suicidal worms that come out 
of the green roof and uh, going to the, the pavement and everything was uh, full of uh, dead, warm uh, bodies. And it could be a problem. There are ways to deal with it. Even the seagulls with some linings, maybe. If there are areas where that becomes really a, a problem with pigeons and, and seagulls. But it, it, it could happen. It could happen. But there's ways to deal with it. Warm seagulls, pigeons, there's way to, to deal with it. Thank you. And also uh, from previously asked questions, uh, do you consider comp um, comparing the ecosystem services and economic assessment on blue green roofs versus green roofs? If so, have you estimated or measured the difference? Uh, okay, it's, I think it's a question for me and, and it's a good question, but uh, uh, harder, to, harder to answer. Uh, but purely from my point of view, uh, in my eyes, all roofs are blue-green, right? Because they reduce water runoff to the sewer. sewer. Uh, but I guess I understand that, that there may be a difference in uh, in our rainwater rainwater runoff from the roof is managed. And uh, simply from the economic point of view, in the case of semi-intensive or <laughs> intensive roof, uh, the source of irrigation is crucial. Uh, if potable uh, or drinking water is used as a source of irrigation, then, then the investment and, and maintenance costs of the increase quite a lot. Uh, and so does the payback period, uh, which is the economic payback from somewhere between 10 and 15 years to maybe 20 and so on, at least from the case studies that I know. So generally speaking, uh, uh, from our experience, it 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 depends on how uh, runoff from the green roof is managed and if you use uh, and what type of irrigation do you use. Yeah, thank you. And also one more question for you. When you're comparing the lifestyle improvement to the property, and let's say an extensive green roof is accessible, uh, do you compare it to other properties in the area that have gardens or to the properties that have accessible green roof by them? Uh, I'm not sure if I understand the question. Uh, if there is a difference between green roofs with, for example, uh, the sedum plants or green roofs that is based on on just some some greenery gardens. that is yeah. in gardens, uh, it depends. You can if you have a, some garden on the roof. There is another benefit mentioned by Anna, and that is you know the crop production that you can monetize. Uh, in the price using the prices of the the crops uh, from the roof. So, uh, but I can imagine that the economic results will will be worse for for the gardens, just in general, because uh, there is not that much you know rainwater management and and, and so on. Thank you for your reply. I think now we will ask last question because of lack of the time and then I will also introduce you to some future events. Uh, Anna, uh, maybe you can answer it. Is there any insight on the increase in market share of green roofs in the EU? Is there any insight on yes, the increase in market share? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I was, I was mute. So, um, the market share is growing not only in in Europe but all around on the world. The, the the percentage of that increase it's not easy to define. It depends each year it's different and every year is different. But I think the trend it will be the it it will keeps increasing. It will keep increasing um, because of several several uh, policies, EU policies that are promoting green roofs. There's also a, a more demand for, for, uh, for um, market demand, in, in fact, for green roofs and for solutions 
uh, and certification like LEED or GREEN that have normally uh, included uh, criteria for green roofs. So the demand will 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 grow um, because of the policies, because of the market demand, because of the environmental um, awareness. People are more and more awareness. So I think uh, in the next years you will see more and more green roofs. That's why we need to uh, create these jobs and um, reskilling some some jobs to green roof installers. Some landscape architects will be needed in the future um, because it will be uh, an opportunity for for many people. Thank you very, very much. Thank you both. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Marek, that you found the time to share your knowledge with us today. I will continue now. Uh, I will send to the chat a few links and um, yeah. And we'll try uh, to present you a few more events that, that will take place in our partnering organizations or at EFB. Uh, I will share my screen now. Yeah, uh, just to thank one more time to Anna, uh, to Marek and to sponsors of the event, uh, Leka Sweden, Zex for Grün, Ecostratus and Vegatech. Thanks to uh, our speakers and our sponsors. All of you had to access to this webinar today free of charge and uh, we are really, really grateful uh, for this information. The webinar will be recorded and available later for you also. Uh, yeah, uh, next, um, I wanted to share with you one more event that we will have at EFB. Um, we have webinars, but we also will have a new format of the meetings at European Federation of Green Roof and Living Wall Associations for our member associations and also for the member of our member associations. And I think most of you as a member uh, members of one of national associations or our partnering organizations. So my, you may also visit this event. It will be open meeting European update. It will take place on 20th of March uh, and we will have um, EFB speakers, but also external uh, guest Luigi Petito from World Green Infrastructure Network. Uh, and uh, this would, uh, event will be moderated uh, by Dusty Gage. I think it will be very good and exciting. Uh, so please free to register. I will also send a bit later links to the chat uh, for all those events. I will tell you now. And also, if you connect to our LinkedIn page, you will have access uh, to uh, most recent information about future events. So please subscribe. And uh, next event is an uh, international conference, Green Modern Cities, which will take place in Warsaw. Uh, it will be held in English, but also online. Uh, so please feel free to register. It will be a very interesting event. We, uh, it's our member association from Poland, and um, it's a very good opportunity uh, to come together with the experts in this field in Poland and also on the international level. Uh, one more great, great event uh, Anna already mentioned, uh, the NBS Summit in Porto. It's the first event and it's kind and it's organized by INCV as uh, a Portuguese Green Roof and Wall Associations. Uh, I think all, almost all EFB members will be present there because we will also have our annual general meeting in Porto <laughs> dedicated to this uh, event. So we all have an opportunity to participate in both uh, uh, both days and um, we uh, encourage you to register as a participant but also there is an opportunity to join it as a sponsor and if you are interested please connect us uh, we will send you more information and uh, don't miss uh, uh, this opportunity uh, i will also send you the link in the chat and you you al also always can call us or write us an email which you already know um, yeah, thank you very much. We will also announce our new webinar soon. It will take place in April. And thanks you to your suggestions. Uh, many of you asked for the uh, webinar about biosolar roofs. I think we will take this topic and we'll invite um, uh, some great speakers like today to tell you more about it. Uh, thank you, Anna. Thank you, Marek. 
Uh, thanks, Leka Sweden. Thanks for Green Vegetech and Ecostratus. And we hope to see all of you at our next events. Thank you very much. I think that's uh, end Thank for today. You. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm really, really grateful to you, Anna and Marek, for your great presentations. I think you also saw many uh, grateful words into the chat. And uh, yeah, I will use this time to send links to the events. It's not so easy to do it simultaneously with writing. Yes. Um, yeah. So. I do want to. Here to is to event send you sorry. Sorry, sorry. Tell, please. <laughs> Do you want to send you my latest version of presentation to share it with, with, with the participants? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think it was one of the most popular questions in the chat, whether we will have the access to the presentations. Those who registered and participated in the event will have it. I already yeah. sent you mine, right? Sitian? Yes, yes, yeah, you did. You already have it. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So those are links for the events uh, we talked about. And also the next webinar will be announced in our LinkedIn channels. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. Bye. And be, be ready for the spring. It's coming. So enjoy it. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.